the Honourable Leader of the New Democratic Party. Let order, please. Let me just put it out there that uh, we'll not tolerate any more heckling on either side. So we will now move on to the Honourable Leader of the New Democratic Party. Mr. Speaker, you, you may have to separate them. They're too much alike to get along. <laughs> I would like to, to ask the Premier about the environment and the government's responsibility to the historically marginalized people in Nova Scotia. Uh, beginning with the south end of Shelburne, we know that the south end of Shelburne is home to one of the province's most historic uh, African Nova Scotian communities, and that the community has lived with the toxic legacy of that adjacent dump uh, for over 50 years. Deadly rare cancers are, are not that rare in the south end of Shelburne, and many wells are uh, contaminated with E. coli and coliform. And, and the community's uh, request has been very simple, clean drinking water. So I, I want to ask the Premier if he could explain what the government's plans are to bring clean uh, drinking water to the people of the south end of Shelburne. The Honourable Premier. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I thank uh, the Honourable Member for the question, uh, Mr. Speaker. I, I'm not sure if this is with the municipality of Argyle, whether there is a water utility there. I'm not exactly sure about the file you're referring to, but I will endeavour to actually ask, uh, because you're bringing up a very important uh, uh, question in the House of Assembly. Uh, communities require our support. That's why we continue to work with the municipalities, why they prioritize their water and sewer uh, um, uh, projects, uh, and why we continue to fund them in partnership with them and the national government. But I will endeavor, Mr. Speaker, to look uh, at that, uh, that particular project that he's referring to uh, and get him back an answer. The Honourable Leader of the New Democratic Party. Mr. Speaker, the Premier's inquiries into this are appreciated. Uh, now, in just a, a couple of weeks, the Nova Scotia Supreme Court is going to be hearing the appeal of the Sebeg and Negatis First Nations uh, appeal about the inadequacy of the government's consultation with the band about the Alton Gas Project. And the band is arguing that the permit should never have been granted uh, because they were not given an adequate chance to examine project proposals or environmental assessments and that there was never enough notice for them to effectively participate in public meetings uh, to uh, uh, express the concerns that they had. So about this, Mr. Speaker, there is something that I find very hard to understand. Will the Premier explain why his government doesn't just do the consultation that's requested instead of having this fight about it in the court. The Honourable Premier. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the uh, very project the Honourable Member is talking about goes back uh, to approximately 2007 and 8, I believe, in the original proposal and the original consultation uh, taking place. Uh, Mr. Speaker, when the new uh, project or when the project uh, began to be re resurface again, uh, we actually put them through consultation, Mr. Speaker, again. Uh, we had, uh, there was a, a Mi'kmaq consultant that was part of that, that was put together by the province. Uh, the dispute, Mr. Speaker, is obviously uh, there is no veto power in consultation. What happens is there's ongoing consultation that happens. Uh, we believe we've met that test. Uh, the, obviously, the community does not. Uh, the solution to solve that for them would be the court. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing uh, that come. But Mr. Speaker, we continue to work with uh, our Mi'kmaq community, uh, and Mr. Speaker, all members in this house, I would hope, recognize uh, the, that we have a responsibility and duty to consult. The Honourable Leader of the New Democratic Party. Uh, finally, Mr. Speaker, for all these years, Northern Pulp has dumped those billions of litres of poison effluent into Boat Harbour, and Boat Harbour is widely regarded as the worst case of environmental racism in Nova Scotia, which has a terrible and shameful record on this subject. Now, I know that the Premier thinks it's unnecessary and uh, superfluous for him uh, to affirm and underline his government's commitment to the deadline under the Boat Harbour legislation, but I want to say that it would mean a lot to an awful lot of people if he would simply say, not one drop of effluent into Boat Harbour after January 31st, 2020. <coughs> Will he say that? The Honourable Premier. Speaker, that is the date in the legislation that uh, has been passed by this House, Mr. Speaker. There's no other legislation before us to change that date, Mr. Speaker. And I want to remind the Honourable Member, we are the government that is committed to cleaning up Boat Harbour. We continue to finance for that, and we will clean up Boat Harbour, Mr. Speaker.